Some days things just don't feel right, but you push through and you end up taking the flight of a lifetime on a T6 Texan in formation with a P-40 Warhawk. Other days things still don't feel right, but you push through again and also take the flight of a lifetime, with a slightly different outcome, however. In my FPV goggles, I saw a body fall right in front of the aircraft. Fortunately for Daniel, he had a very different day. That was epic! Woo! There were many jumping off points on that day's chain of events, and maybe I should have just called it off and tried another day. Then again, maybe not. After taking the Akranon plan out to the lake the first time, it was apparent that the front to back weight shift requirements were greater than the current handle geometry would allow. So I modified the handle to allow me to get my weight further forward once I had a foot or two of altitude, but would still allow me to get my weight all the way back for takeoff. Then it was back to the lake, this time with more equipment to get better video. It turned out to be quite challenging to get all the moving parts coordinated for towing and filming, but finally everyone needed was in the right place on the right day. Daniel, aka RC Test Flight, had flown in from Washington for this and everyone else had also traveled quite a distance to make this happen. There wasn't any other day in the near future that would work for everyone if something fell through. After packing up the Akrana plan, we headed to the lake where we first met up with Jason the tow driver and things started going sideways immediately. So are they going to let him? Oh, they're going to bring another supervisor. <laughs> supervisor, supervisor. <laughs> We headed down to the lake without Jason, with high hopes that the situation would be worked out and Jason would be joining us soon. We'll see if they let him in the park with this thing. He made it, woohoo! Oh wow, how pretty. Oh man. They wouldn't let him? They wouldn't let him. Ah. Uh, the answer is yes, can it, pull it. it can pull it. Uh, if you don't mind us using that little tow point no, on the back of the motor. The boat we were originally going to use for filming was repurposed as the tow boat, but due to the different rope attachment point, I would have to use an alternate rope release that we hadn't tried before. So the uh, the jet skis got flagged for having water in the bottom, and now our backup boat, the motor won't start. And then we got um, we got Daniel here. He's not contributing at all. I mean, like why? After about 15 minutes of fiddling though, Jason was able to save the day and get it working well enough. We have success! Woo! Yeah! The backup worked! Daniel pulled it off. It was all Daniel. Yeah, I uh, willed it into distance. <laughs> so we're going to be using this big remote control ground effect vehicle to chase that bigger ground effect vehicle. Ooh -wee. thing's a tank. Okay, so radio switches. This is red for a reason. If it's back, we're good. If I'm dipping, but I don't catch. You're gonna try and correct it? Yeah, okay. All right. yeah give me time on that. But okay. don't give me time if I start going. Electronics in my pockets. Good. Right. Good. All right. say we'll do a couple tests, non-airborne. No, I mean, you well, want for the quick release or no? Uh, you and Don need to figure out the speedo thing. All right, here we go. We're gonna start pulling them. Okay, let me get the GPS going for speed. We'll take what we can get. Yeah, yeah, at this point, you know. The boat's picture, a boat. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, the quick release, I was just pulling up the rope and it popped, so it seems like it's pretty simple, <laughs> sensitive. Yeah. yeah. This is so sketchy, guys. <laughs> <laughs> at this point, we were down our powerful tow vehicle with a water driven speedometer, a proven tow release, and a rope release operator solely dedicated to monitoring the release. We were already three hours into the day and I was definitely getting into decision fatigue with everything that was and wasn't happening. 
As difficult as everything was to get organized, I was pretty sure this was the last time I would attempt to fly the Sakranin plan. I thought it was now or never, but maybe I was wrong. After the events of the day, I became more interested in my decision-making processes, so I went to Skillshare who are sponsoring this video and took the course called Decision-Making Skills, a four-step model to improve your decisions by Jill McCabe. In the latest course I went through, it became apparent that I may have the opposite of the zero-risk bias and may want to adjust my perspective. Skillshare is appealing to me because they offer top quality courses by instructors such as MKBHD for people who are interested in leveling up their abilities. For any skill you are looking to pick up, they probably have an excellent course waiting for you. I need to work on storytelling and wouldn't you know it, there are plenty of courses to choose from and I will be taking one of these next. Skillshare's values align with mine and I was a member of the community long before they decided to be a sponsor on this channel. I am happy to say that the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. And now, let's go fly. You can see in this picture that under tension the rope was unable to get around the eyelet where the pull pin engaged. So when Jason pulled the release as we had tested when the tension was low, nothing happened. Jason had to yank the entire assembly to get it to finally release, but by then I had already decided to bail in case the craft decided to invert and pile drive me. From the drone camera, you can see my initial reaction to the rope not releasing is to give it my all with weight shift and bring the nose down. I realize here that this is hopeless and shift back to prepare to jump, while giving the rope release a few more milliseconds to work, which it finally did, but I had already committed to jumping. Also, since the Akranoplan slowed down much more than I did once the tension came off the rope, it pushed my body over as I slid down the wing and caused me to land on my back rather than feet first. Wow, that's nuts. That is so nuts. It looked like I was lining up right with that, like right with the outer pontoon. Yeah. And I was like, if I don't punch through real quick, he's gonna nail me. Yeah. Because I had zero situational awareness to what was going on outside of the little frame of view of the yeah. FPV camera. So I didn't even know that you were flying high. Like I was just <laughs> yeah, going along and suddenly a body just comes through the frame. <laughs> I think okay. you're better than the spruce goose. I did, I did do better than the spruce goose. <laughs> I mean, it registered pretty quickly, like something was wrong on your end. So, like, I was like, that's when I failed. Yeah, no, I, I saw you, like, sideways and jumping and then dropping straight down. And then I was like, please don't hit the plane. <laughs> like, and I couldn't push hard enough to, like, get my feet vertical. Okay. So, like, that, like, I was like, okay, this is going to be a long fall. And then when I couldn't get my feet under me, I was like, oh. You would think that would be the end of the day's activities, but you'd be wrong. So we have some creasing behind the step, so I'm not sure if we've broken the body or not, but Daniel is a crazy man and still wants to go, uh, go scope it out, so he told me his family is not the suing type. I want to scope it out slowly. <laughs> we'll go slow, Daniel, don't worry. Okay. That was great. I was having a blast. Is that the best kite ride ever? Dude, that was so sick. Very scary, but super sick. <laughs> I was really surprised at how controllable it is with the weight shift. Oh yeah. You can really pitch down when you need to. Yeah. To an extent, of course. Until it gets away from you, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm content. All right, then let's go. Okay. Let's go. Right. That was 
boat is so fun. It's like a giant flying scooter that, that tries to buck you off. <laughs> I go to idle. That's going on Kook Slam's Instagram. <laughs> yeah, it's very red. Now I can't see. <laughs> Got it all loaded up. Fist bump for YouTube. That evening, I headed to my happy place in the mountains with friends and family to relax and contemplate the events of the day. As the channel goes faster and higher, I may not be able to walk away from such mistakes and what got me here won't get me there. It was good to see that the universe still doesn't care what concerns were on my mind, rather only that I did not follow best practices. If safety was first, then I would probably just stay inside and never leave the house. So as Mike Rowe says, safety third? That is it for the towable Akrana plan. The logistics of getting this thing on the water are too much of a headache and the tandem configuration requires more weight shift than can reasonably be accommodated if I want to fly more than a foot off the water. But that isn't the end of this airframe, so stay tuned. Moment. I think you need par thrust on this thing. <laughs> and that would be primo. Because then you can have it be super nose heavy uh -huh. and the par thrust will just float the nose up. Yeah. And it'll never flip up. It'll just cruise. Yeah. Slow because it's got par thrust.